Hi everyone, Father Tony here and I am sick. So uh, I apologize that this vlog is at minimum one day late. Uh, it could very possibly be more, but I'm recording it on Saturday and I try and release them on Fridays. So anyway, not the point. Um, I'm sure I still wanna get one out to you guys, but uh, this might be just kind of me talking out the camera. What I'd like to talk about today is um, based on a comment I got on YouTube. I'm gonna look up who made the comment. Yeah, the comment comes from Pablo Nepsis. Um, he, uh, he said some things and then he says, I feel that there's something in them, uh, the vlogs, uh, being more personal that conveys more about Gnosticism than information itself. And that gave me kind of an idea to um, expand on that a little bit and talk to you about how, um, how Gnosticism shapes my personal worldview. Um, I'm gonna, if you don't know exactly what Gnosticism is, I'm gonna link a uh, playlist for you uh, right here and down in the description, and you can um, go and watch that, uh, go and watch that playlist of Gnosticism 101. And, uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to read you uh, the four points of Gnosticism that I wrote about in my book, um, uh, Sanctuary of the Sacred Flame, if you wanna look it up on Amazon or whatnot. Um, so the four points of Gnosticism, a remote divinity, the divine source known as the Pleroma or the Father, among other names. Number two, creation story that details the emanations from that single divine source. Number three, creation of or the organization of a less than perfect universe by a creator God who is also less than perfect in comparison to the divine source. And four, that knowledge, Gnosis, of this perceived separation from the divine source, coupled with the awareness of a part of us that is also divine, is the key to our salvation. So kind of taking those points uh, and expanding upon them, um, the, I think the main thing that I try and keep in mind in my daily life with regards to Gnosticism is the idea of um, materialism. And that while some people have a very um, strict dualist worldview and some people have a very kind of qualified monist worldview, um, I can't say from day to day that I have a consistent take on whether Gnosticism is dualist or mitigated dualist or qualified monist or any of the other fancy theological terms that people throw around. But at the end of the day, whether material is, uh, the, you know, matter is a very different thing than spirit or it's just a variations on a theme and one is more perfect than the other, um, the, the end result I think is the same. I don't think you need to pontificate about how many angels dance on the head of the pin to understand that the material is definitely less important than the spiritual. And so as a result, I tend to try to remind myself throughout the day that, you know, yeah, I'd really love to have a huge latte with lots of sugar and, um, and my body is telling me that that's what I want. Uh, and I could probably get those calories somewhere else that's better for my body um, than just to have kind of my instinctual uh, lizard brain tell me that I want fat and sugar. Do I need that uh, fancy new gadget or do I need to buy uh, some snazzy new shoes or I'm bad with that example because I don't actually buy a lot of stuff. I buy a lot of gadgets and I tend to justify it by saying that they're for the Gnostic Wisdom Network and they're for you. So um, I don't know. I don't feel so bad about that <laughs> because I think those are being put to good use for the most part. Uh, Kind of an extension of that, I like to think about the environment and um, and to understand that yes, this physical world is less real or less perfect than the spiritual world. It is in the same way. It is the tools that we have to overcome the world and to transcend and to uh, elevate ourselves through gnosis. So, I think that if we treat the world as a, an aspect of the divine as much as we are, then we will treat it better. Um, we will not be as wasteful with our resources. We will, you know, uh, not, not throw things on the ground and uh, consider what is biodegradable and what isn't, things like that. So that's, that helps me um, in, my, in my own Gnostic worldview.
because of that remote divinity stuff that I mentioned earlier, I have a, a difficult, um, I have a difficult relationship to prayer. Uh, I believe that prayer is important for, um, for our own spiritual development. I think that prayer is a useful tool for achieving gnosis and theosis and beyond. Um, but I don't necessarily believe that prayer is important to uh, the remote deity <clears throat> or even the aeons or any number of the spiritual beings that exist from here to there. Or if there are beings that are impressed by prayer, then they're not necessarily the beings that you want to impress. So when somebody asks for prayers, um, you know, so prayers for healing or for guidance or anything like that, I don't know necessarily what that accomplishes. Um, a lot of people have been talking about the, um, the recent uh, terrorist shootings and, and things in various parts of the world and, uh, you know, tragedies in general and, and asking for prayers. And I, I think that if prayers help you, uh, then yes, absolutely, prayer is important. Uh, prayer is important to me. I don't want to say that it isn't. Um, but if you believe in God's will, then what are you praying for? Uh, if you believe in some kind of religious determinism of some kind, um, or if you believe that there's a remote deity higher than the creator God, as the Gnostics do, <coughs> then what's, what's the point? I don't know the answer to that. I'm not uh, advocating for it one way or the other. This is something that I'm uh, thinking about and struggling with in my own daily spiritual life. And finally, kind of the big one for me is I think Gnosticism uh, for me uh, means that I have to be a feminist. Um, I, I've come to understand uh, through my readings and my online wanderings in the past couple of months that um, that an act of societal rebellion, uh, specifically uh, attempting to change the status quo in order to make things more fair, um, while a lot of that stuff could be seen as, oh, you know, you're just rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic, especially if you take kind of a more hardcore dualist view. I think that in a symbolic way, in addition to in a very real way, uh, social change is a way of kind of saying to the archons, you know, this isn't your world. We, as the true inheritors of the earth, um, you know, the true rulers of the archons, as it were, you know, we get to decide our own fate. Uh, and so feminism, intersectional feminism, um, transgender rights, marriage equality, all those kind of uh, what are traditionally considered left-wing social values, um, I think that anytime you have a, a fight between liberal and conservative, um, small L and small C, uh, I think that the side pushing for change in the status quo, um, I think that's a very Gnostic act. Um, now, of course, you know, I understand that people are conservative because they have practical concerns about the changes that the people who are liberals would like to promote. And, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not making judgments on any of that, but I'm just saying that from a worldview point of view, in a symbolic sense, fighting against the status quo and pushing for social change, for me, that's a pretty Gnostic thing to do. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it there. I hope that that wasn't too boring for you and I hope that my, um, my lack of voice hasn't thrown you off. Sorry about the late vlog, and um, I'll just keep making apologies until you tell me in the comments that you love me, uh, <laughs> because I desperately need your validation. That's why I vlog. No, I'm kidding. I'm fine. Anyway, have a good week, and I'll hopefully see you next week on Friday.